else, let's pray over our Bibles and make a confession of faith and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, ever-living Word of God into my life. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know, today, we are celebrating kindness. I got a sneaky feeling, what, monthly, we're in June already, and every subject, every week, God's been celebrating something. And uh, I don't know how many years you can keep that up, probably for a long time. But uh, we're celebrating kindness today, and we're going to start off in Ephesians 2.6 with the kindness of God. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. He wants to show us his grace in his kindness. He's going to be kind to us because of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Our wonderful Father shows his kindness to us through Jesus. I like that. And then in, in Titus 3, 4, it's a long passage, but this bit here says, when the kindness and the love of God our Saviour toward man appeared. That's talking about Jesus. When Jesus came, basically. And he describes the coming of Jesus as when the kindness and the love of God our Saviour towards man appeared. It's the kindness, and the kindness is because of love. He, none of us deserves for God to be kind to us. Sometimes we can be really nice, kind to nice people. But we don't want to be kind to the people who aren't nice. But God's kind to everybody. Because he loves us all. He does all this by his love. The sacrifice of Jesus made you and I acceptable to receive kindness from God. Because of Jesus. And D Jesus demonstrates his kindness through love. Father demonstrates his kindness through love. We should do the same. Now, does anybody here watch any films ever? Yeah? You ever know, watch a film? Well, after Janet and I watched a film the other night, it was, I've seen it before, it's called Evan Almighty. Have you seen, anybody seen it? Yeah? It's a very funny film, I like it. Steve Carell is, the, is uh, Evan Baxter, who's a newly elected congressman, and his motto is, we're going to change the world. Yeah? And God, of God, God, God is Morgan Freeman. Who else could be God, you know? Because he was, he was God in Bruce Almighty. And he's actually quite good at it. You know, and I know that it, it, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, really did. Now, God gets, God gets Evan, who ends up like, acting completely like Noah. He ends, it gets him to build an ark. Yeah, everybody thinks there's going to be a big, big flood. Well, it was just a local flood. And if he hadn't built this ark, a lot of people would have died. So he became the big hero. He's a big hero and he's enjoying being the hero. And it's, it's a real blessing. Very funny film. You need to see it if you haven't seen it. And at the end of the, uh, the, the film, um, Evan Baxter is out is in the countryside with his family, just enjoying the day, having a little picnic. And there's God stood under a tree. So he goes over to speak to God. Oh, that's, that should play then. Oh, I don't believe it. That's not done. You won't be able to do anything if it's not doing it. Oh, well. There's a little clip I had there. Basically, he goes over and he says, well done, you did a good job there. And then he said, the thing is that you just did... He said, how do you change the world? How do you change the world? He said, one random act of kindness at a time. One random act of kindness. And he put the words together like that, an act of random kindness, and it spells the word ark. So, 
I know that God wants us to do something about that. And he spoke to me as we we're watching this film. So that's another thing I notice. If God spoke to me while I'm watching a film, guess what? God's watching the film as well. Must be. If he, he must be pointing out, he said, that look, take a notice of that, make a note of that. And so, okay, so I made a note of it. So, God wants us to do something with this. In Ephesians uh, 4, 20, 32, it says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Kindness to others is easier when forgiveness is there first. If you've got something against a person, you will find it difficult to be kind to them. And remember, always remember, we are only Christians because he forgave us. Yeah? That's the only reason we're part of his family. We're not worthy to be part of his family without being forgiven. And he's forgiven us already. Now I was speaking to a, a friend of mine last night. This lady, she said that she had really struggled with a particular lady in the town who had had a, an issue with my friend's husband. And she couldn't understand why she was off with her as well. And if you've got a problem with, you know, a person's husband, there's no reason why you should be off with the wife as well. No reason for that at all. She wouldn't speak to her. She turned her nose up at her and she turned away when she came anywhere near her. And she was getting really upset about it. So she went to see a friend and told her how she felt about it. And the friend said, I want you to imagine Jesus wrapping his arms around that lady because he loves her and he gave his life for her. When you see her, see her with Jesus' arms wrapped around her. And she said, okay, I will. And the next time she saw her, the lady snubbed her again and she saw her, she saw Jesus' arms around her and she never felt sad. She now knew that whatever unforgiveness was going on, it wasn't from her part because she'd forgiven the lady and was seeing the person as a forgiven person because of Jesus' arms wrapped around us. And I think that's a message to all of us. If we have a person we've got an issue with, before you take the issue up, imagine the person with Jesus' arms around them because he loves them. Isn't that good? I like that. We have to imagine that. If you, if you can't imagine that, you need to do a bit of praying because that should be easy to do. Because Jesus died for how many people? All. Oh, for all time. Yeah? So that... Get the forgiveness there, <clears throat> the kindness will come easier. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not pervade itself, it's not puffed up. Love is of God. And we have his love placed in our hearts. And that love can cause us to imp be empowered to do good things, kind things for other people. <clears throat> Excuse me, last, last evening, um, we, most of our food was brought to our table, but they had a, a carvery element of it. So our table was at, told to go up, and we went out to the carvery, and Pastor Janet went first, and then this other lady and her husband, and she's, she's very slight framed anyway, and a bit wobbly on her feet. Um, and the plates were really hot and she st was struggling to hold the plate just really hard I said look I'll get yours and I'll, I'll hold yours so I took her plate and she told me what she wanted on it and I, she took, took my arm and I walked her back to her table when, I put, when she sat down and I put the plate down in front of her what did she say to me? that was kind yeah that's, the, that's just kind that, that's a demonstration of the word kind, what that means, what kindness means, how you can be kind to be. Was it difficult? I just thought it was automatic. Look, there's somebody got something needs doing, I'll do it. Get on with it. In Colossians 3.12, it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. Earlier in the uh, the chapter, Paul says, put off anger, malice, wrath, and all these things. 
but now put these on. And Paul is speaking to us as Christians because he says, as the elect of God. There's only one group of people on the planet who are the elect of God, and they're the Christians, the people who are the children of God, born again people. And he's telling us to put this on. In other words, it, it is something that is available to us. Being kind is a, an attribute of God. It's an attribute of Jesus, an attribute of the Holy Spirit, and we can have that operating in our own lives. He wants us to be clothed with humility in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, 2 Peter 1. Wonderful scripture. I love this one. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. We've all been given the measure of faith, and when we start off our faith doesn't seem very exercised, doesn't seem to be able to do very much for us, and we don't know much about Jesus anyway. So this exercise here, there is a kind of exercise, you have to do this this way, is something for us to do. We can work on this every day if we like. Like Godfrey said, she decided now she's not going to leave her home without praying first. I think that's a wonderful exercise. This is another one. So you take your faith and you add something to it. You add virtue. What's virtue? Virtue is having thoughts of moral excellence. So if you're trying to add to your faith and you're having nasty thoughts about other people, you might as well stop there, because you're not going to get very far. You need to change the way you're thinking. You've got to have good thoughts of other people. Then he says to virtue, add knowledge. Well, the best knowledge you can ever get is just to read your Bible. Read your Bible, fellowship with other Christians, get as much out of them with what they know about Jesus as you can, and put it all together, add it together, and you can be strong in Jesus' name. Then to, it says, add to knowledge self-control. That means inner strength from the Word that you've just got knowledge about. You read the Word and it finds an area, you'll find an area in the Bible that tells you how you can do things through Jesus, how you're able to be through Jesus. That will give you the inner strength to carry these things out. And then it says, to your self-control, add perseverance. That's steadfastness, constancy and patience. Patience, most Christians pray about patience like this, Lord, I need patience, but I want it now. Patience means patience. Patience means you pray and you just trust God and you leave it with Him. Amen? Sometimes we pray and we don't get the answer straight away so we think God's not answering my... No, 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 no. You might not be ready to receive it yet. Hallelujah. Then it says, to your perseverance add godliness. That means a holiness and a godly reverence. And to your reverence, add brotherly kindness. That means being kind to the people in the church first. Not, you don't, not excluding anybody else, but if you can't do it in the church, you're going to find it hard doing it to anybody else outside. Amen? You, if you can't be kind to people in the church, you can't be kind to other people outside. And I don't, God just brought it to my mind, I don't know why I thought it, but... I obviously, we've been running this church now for 30 years, come September. And uh, I have made it my personal job, just something for me personally, to get to know everybody's name. And sometimes I get it wrong, but most of the time I know people's names. And I I've, I've see people in the church who've been in the church, not quite as long as me, but quite a long time. And if I was to get somebody the other side of the room to stand up, you couldn't tell me what their name is. I find that sad. I find that sad. We should know what other people's names are. It's okay if you forget it, but we should be having a go and knowing what people's names are. You can't really be very kind to somebody you, you, you don't know in the church. You've got to get to know each other. So brotherly kindness means starting in the church. And to brotherly kindness, add love. 
that way it'd be easier to, to minister to people outside in the world. So love is the key. Would you agree? Love is the key. Now an example in the Bible of kindness is in Acts 28. Now Paul and the people who went with him were going to Rome and they were shipwrecked, shipwrecked off a little island so they didn't know what it was. When they got to it they realised it was Malta. <coughs> now when they'd escaped, that's escaped the, the waves and everything, they found out the island was called Malta and the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. The local people showed unusual kindness, more than he'd been used to, more than what he was normally expecting. They met their needs. There's people have just been shipwrecked, they're absolutely soaking wet and the first thing they did was build a fire and encourage, come on, come on, get round this fire and get yourself warm. They probably fed them as well, we don't know. But they were kind to them, it was good. Now the Greek word for kindness means moral goodness and integrity. Moral goodness and integrity that is fit for use. That means it must meet a need. Kindness must meet a need. There must be a need a person has for you to be kind, for you to do something for them. Kindness will always meet a need. So how many recently has ever met anybody's need? You've just done something for somebody. Yeah, most of us have. We, we quite, quite enjoy in that. I mean, I can be in the town and, and I'll see somebody coming out of a door and I'll, I'll just, I'll hold the door open for them. I, I do that. I don't, I don't barge through expecting them to get out of the way. I will always get out of the way. Why? Because I want to show kindness. I want to demonstrate that if Jesus was stood there, he wouldn't barge through either. He'd open the, open the door and hold it open for them till they get out. You know, and I know that God wants us to elaborate on this a little bit. How many people have then done something for somebody else and to cause them to say thank you? Yeah? Well, if you have, you were probably kind. If you get to the point where somebody can say thank you, that means that you're doing something that has blessed them and benefited them. And they, they want to say thank you. That's the way why, why Sondan and Bali are giving us some food today to say thank you for being kind and donating that stuff that went off to, to Fiji. And we were just so grateful to be able to do it. People on the other side of the world have got stuff now that they completely lost and was washed away and destroyed. Brilliant. I feel good about that, do you? Yeah, so do they. They think it's great. Now I think we would all agree with Evan Baxter. Evan Baxter's motto was, I'm going to change the world. And when he spoke to God, he said, that's a great idea. He said, how do you change the world? One act of random kindness at a time. One, say that with me, one act of random kindness at a time. Just one. You only have to do one, then you do another one. Nobody's expecting you to do it all day long. Just do the one and then look for another one. Look for it to happen. So today, I'm launching something I'm calling the ARC project. Is anybody interested in having a little project in your life which will involve you being kind to people? Yeah? I can't see it hurt harming anybody, but it might mean that you'll have to do something about it. You actually might have to take this up and do something with it. So what are we going to do? We're going to do acts of random kindness for people. But we don't just want to do things for people. We want to do things for people and tell them that our motive is love. We want to do things for people and tell them we are doing this because Jesus loves you. Anybody interested in being involved? So we have, we've had some business cards printed. And it says, this is the art project. Acts of random kindness. Why did I do something kind for you today? To show you that Jesus loves you. I am from Foundation Christian Fellowship. And it gives the address. 
join us this Sunday at 10.30 so we can show you some more of the love of Jesus. Would you be happy to have those in your work wallet or your purse? And when you do something for somebody, anything, even if you just held the door open for somebody as they're coming out of a shop, you can give them one of these cards and they go, what's that for? Well, I just thought I'd be kind to you and I'm kind to you because Jesus loves you. So um, I want you to know that. So here's a card. And they'll probably think, weirdo. But they'll go away thinking, somebody told me Jesus loves me. You know, not everybody likes the idea of, of being told about Jesus. I only heard a couple of days ago about um, a uh, church in America, in some little town somewhere, has been, it's got great big billboards advertising Jesus. The big word Jesus outside the church. They've been told they can't use that word Jesus anymore. They pass little local law. And they're getting a bit upset about it. I wouldn't be too upset about it. I just get my uh, sign writer out and I change it all to Yeshua or Messiah or Son of Mary or something, Son of God. I would have it changed so that they could, they'd have to do another ordinance now. And when they change that, I'd change the words again. And they would get fed up in the end and I'd put it back to Jesus. <laughs> you can't let people do things like that to you. So we've got, we've got a thousand of these. You might not know, you might not get rid of them all in one go. But I would suggest you put a couple of these in your purse, in your wallet, in your car. Because another thing, you see, you, you, might, um, you might get out of a, a car parking space and leave, a, leave somebody a space and they get in and they think, oh, that was kind, give them a card. Every time you do something nice for somebody, give them a card. It's just another way of advertising God. Advertising Jesus, advertising love. How often do you see things and they're talking about love? Every time you hear songs and they're talking about love, they're talking about sex, actually. We're talking about the kind of love that means, I will lay my life down for you. I think so much of you, I love you so much, I'm going to lay down my life so that you can be free and set free and you can join my daddy's kingdom. That's what Jesus did for us. So can I encourage you today also to tell anybody you know that's in the church who isn't here today, when you see them, tell them, did you hear about the art project? And they'll say, no. And then you can tell them and you can show them these cards and you can tell them where they can get some more. Because I don't think a thousand of them are going to last very long. Yeah? So take, just take a few, take four or five or whatever. It'd make more of you one, but don't take too many because we want to see how they go. And if you think that it's working for you, do it some more. One and an uh, uh, act of random kindness at a time. And I think we'll change this area around here. We'll change the way people think about church. We'll change the way people you think, why would I want to go to that church? Or why not? Why would you not go to that church? You know, and sometimes you just have to stand up against religion. A friend said to me recently that um, uh, they'd gone to a, a, a Catholic church. Now, I've got nothing against the Catholics, but some of their beliefs are a bit strange. And um, she'd gone to this Catholic church because there was a, I don't know, a christening or something going on with her friend's baby. And then they took communion. And she went up and she took communion. Now afterwards, the, the minister came up to her and said, um, said, you shouldn't have taken communion because you're not, you're not a member of this church. He said, you, you, have to take, you haven't taken classes, have you? And this lady said, let me tell you, when I was 11 years old, I was in church. And as the man was preaching, God spoke to me and said, I want you to follow me and serve me. So I gave my life to Jesus that day when I was 11. I think she's 75 now, this lady. And this was probably a little while ago. Maybe she was 60 at the time. And she said this one, So I don't need permission from you. I don't need to take your classes. If I want to take communion when it's being offered, I will take it. Whether you like it or not. She's not been to the, back to that church. But, you know, you can't let anybody stop you doing it. Do you know, nobody can stop you loving them. Nobody can stop you loving them. 
You can love them and they might hate the idea, but they can't stop you doing it. And don't be put off just because somebody's upset about it. Somebody might take your card and throw it in the gutter. Pick it up and put it in your pocket. Use it next time. You know? But let me encourage you to grab, grab some of these and be that person that God wants you to be in a nice, simple, easy way. This is not evangelism. This is not going out in the streets preaching. This is just doing something nice for somebody and saying, here, this is why I did that. And letting them just walk off. Leave them with it. Struggling with what on earth is going on? Who on earth is that? And while they're thinking all those things, they're reading the card. And if you want to, it's blank on the back, you can put your name or your mobile number or your home number, whatever you want to do on the back. It's up to you. You don't have to put anything if you don't want. Okay? So let me encourage you to just from now on, just do one act of random kindness at a time in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.